There are so many different options out there for microphones. As you know, if you've watched my channel, I have tons of microphones. I have all sorts. I have dynamics and condensers that are meant for vocals and guitars and all purposes. I have enough microphones to basically record anything that I could possibly want to record in the music sense. But if I only could have one microphone, what would it be? What would it be? Something that I have learned from my Music Monday project, because I've been doing that since August, and I have tried to use as many different microphones as I possibly could, partially so you could hear them, partially so I could work with them and hear them, um, and also to show you that, yeah, I do use and back up what I talk about in my reviews. But there has been one standout microphone through this entire process, and it is this microphone right here. This is the Shure SM7B. It's by far one of the most famous microphones in the world. Um, you know, it's, it's a standard, it's a staple, and the thing sounds amazing. I haven't found anything, you know, if you're doing guitars and voices and stuff, I really haven't found any application where this microphone is like, nope, that's just not gonna work ever. Um, I've used it on pianos, I've used it on guitars, I've used it on electric guitar amplifiers, I've used it on bass amplifiers before. Uh, it's an amazing microphone. One of the things I think you guys might want to know about this microphone, and you probably maybe do know, that it's a very low gain microphone. So that's good and bad. One of the th reasons that it's bad is that it does really require that you have an external preamp you can run this off of an internal preamp on any interface. Um, I, I have done that in the past and I used to do that, but you do really have to crank up the gain on your interface to get this to work properly. So it is nice to have something where you're not really maxing out your gain structure in the first stage of it, right? Um, it is nice to have the external preamp to give your gain structure a little bit more of a balance before you know you, you're hitting your computer um, so I will say that you do need to have a not need but it is highly recommended you're the cloud lifter a lot of people really like using the cloud lifter on this but I have my Jomeek 3Q which works perfectly fine that's what I'm using today I have the preamp gain turned up pretty high but the output gain is not turned up crazy high or anything so on the other end of it one of the good things about this microphone being low gain is the fact that it doesn't pick up very much far away from it, right? If I back up just a little bit, and if I just keep going back, or if I go over to the side and over here, and I'm speaking more or less at the same volume, right? You, you don't hear it as much. In fact, my window is open right now. There's a truck outside. There's like a diesel. There's a, an oil truck outside across the street. It's a beautiful day. I wanted to air out the studio. And I know that with this microphone, chances are you probably can't hear that, even though I have this turned up really high. Maybe, you know, people with headphones, and I, I'm going to have to check this statement later. Um, maybe you hear a little bit of it. But overall, if I had the window closed, you wouldn't hear anything from outside, which is awesome. A condenser would pick up everything. But then the other part that makes that really nice is if you are recording in an untreated space, this mic, oh, you might hear this. Let's see. That was a bus driving by. So maybe you heard that, I don't know. We will have to check this later in post-production. But if you are recording in an untreated space, this microphone isn't gonna really give a crap about that. If you don't have a bunch of foam or acoustic panels like me, um, and your room is very live and reverby, this is a great microphone for those kinds of environments because of how low gain it is. You know, it really was designed to be a broadcast microphone and typically little broadcast booths are just untreated spaces in a lot of cases, especially when this microphone was invented. They were just little boxes, lots of glass and, you know, desks everywhere and stuff. So it was important that the microphone didn't capture a lot of the environment that it was recording in. That is why I am here to say, if I could only have one microphone in my studio, it would be the Shure SM7B. It is by far the most versatile of all of my microphones, and it sounds awesome 100% of the time. I love this thing on vocals, especially for a voice like mine, where I have a deeper voice, 
Um, and then sometimes when I get a little, you know, nasally when I'm talking to you guys, this microphone doesn't, you know, accentuate those frequencies very much. It's, it's a really nice dry sound, which means that when you get into the mixing stage of your life, that this microphone is just giving you a nice, dry, easy to work with signal. Not a ton of high end, so you're not like rolling out stuff, but if you want to boost it up, like in an acoustic guitar track or something, there's definitely enough usable high end in this audio signal for you to get nice clarity out of a, something like an acoustic guitar. The SM7B goes brand new. I'm, I just looked online before I made this video in the neighborhood of $400, but used, which is, I bought this guy used many years ago, um, and it was around $300 then, and they still go for around $300 now. You add that with some sort of preamp, like a cloud lifter or the Joe Meek 3Q, which is, again, what I'm using, that might push you up into the 400 some odd dollars area, but under $500 for a microphone and preamp setup that can pretty much do anything. I mean, I'm not gonna say everything, of course, it's not gonna be great at a lot of things, but for the average person recording at home, acoustic guitars and vocals and stuff, this microphone would be excellent. Of course, this microphone has been used by some of the most famous artists in the world on some of the most famous albums. Most notably would be Michael Jackson and the Thriller album. And so that's an interesting thing to talk about because a lot of times you hear engineers talking about matching the voices with the microphones, which is always a good thing to do. But someone like Michael Jackson had, you know, like the high and a relatively thin tone voice. So my Monday music video, I used this for my friend Omni MC. She also has like a, a high and, and sort of thin, I wouldn't call it nasally, maybe a little bit nasally, but just sort of a thin tone on the voice. Not It's not really deep and rich, right? She's a female rapper and she's got like a tone when she sings. Um, but the nice thing about a microphone like this is that it doesn't accentuate that high end or, or the high mids or anything. So I don't know if, like if I was trying to match a microphone with her voice, I don't know if I would have initially chosen this microphone, but we used it because it was here and it was set up and I was like, let's try it because it's here and set up. And we did and we both listened to it and we're like, hell yes, that sounds awesome. Let's just use the SM7B. It's great, great for hip hop vocals. If you're doing rap or hip hop, absolutely great for that. If you're doing rock vocals, great for that. You can scream into this thing and it's pretty much impossible that you're ever gonna distort the diaphragm on this microphone. It's just an awesome sounding microphone. The fact that it doesn't get a lot of the room reverb and stuff like that, ideal for the untreated home recording studio space or the treated one. I have a treated space um, and I use it all the time. And it just doesn't matter that my, treat, my space is treated because this microphone doesn't care. Now I care that my space is treated when it comes time for mixing or recording with condenser microphones, which I still do very often. But if you're somebody out there looking for that one single microphone for a home recording studio and what's gonna work best across many, many applications, I would highly recommend that you look at the Shure SM7B. This is an unsponsored video. I bought this with my own money many years ago off of eBay, and I just use the thing all the time. It's also great for videos. Uh, last weekend, last Saturday, I made the video, and this was actually turned way up, and it was off camera, and it even made a great room microphone, or like almost like a boom microphone in that sense, um, and it really shocked me. I watch Banjo Ben, if anybody watches Banjo Ben's channel, awesome channel, he uses this microphone for his guitar and for his voice a lot, and I was watching him do some stuff a couple weeks ago, and he had this sort of set up high and, and far away from them, and I was shocked at how well it performed in that application for a video. Now, I could have done that today, but I wanted you to be able to look at the microphone, you know? So, um, anyway, the Shure SM7B is by far my favorite microphone that I've been using for years. And if I had to only have one microphone in this whole studio of mine, it would be this guy with some sort of good preamp, and that's what I have. <laughs> so, you might want to check it out. Um, you know, it's, it's a great microphone. If you can't afford this, I would just say get the SM58 and run with that thing. Because the 58 is similar enough where you'll get a lot of the same benefits out of it. It doesn't pick up for very far away. Um, it doesn't get a lot of that room reverb and, and all that kind of stuff. You don't need a preamps per se with that microphone, 
because it is a little bit more high gain because it's made for live purposes, but it's just in general, the 58, if you can't afford the $400, get a 58 or a 57, the SM58, SM57. Don't forget you guys, SM stands for studio microphone. They might be not expensive and they might not be flashy to look at in videos or whatever, but they sound awesome. If you use those microphones, I guarantee you, you can get working tones out of the 57 and the 58 and the SM7B because this is sort of the big brother. It's the big daddy, mama jama. <laughs> I love this thing. And I think you have figured that out by now. So you guys, I think that's all I'm gonna talk about today, but uh, we're coming up on Music Monday and I'm getting excited and lots of special guests are gonna be joining me. I'm gonna be using more friends and artists from all over the world. And uh, you will, um, I think we're gonna come up with some cool new music for Music Monday, cause I'm trying to do that. I wanna branch out more and be more experimental with what I'm doing here. And uh, you will be watching that very soon. All right, you guys have an awesome day. I will talk to you soon. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon page, wherever that is now. And all these other videos here on my channel, GarageBand and beyond. All right, peace and love.